What does trust mean in the world of robotics? Trust is a complex term, and we are only starting to really work on the notion of trust that a robot needs to have in the human interacting with it and the instructions it gets. Could you please walk forward? Yes, but I cannot do that because there is an obstacle ahead. The obstacle is not solid. Okay. Please walk forward. Okay. In this particular case, when the person told the robot that the uh, obstacle in front of it wasn't solid, that fact, the obstacle is not solid, got stored in the robot's database and it allowed it now to engage in reasoning why it was still safe to execute the command. So what are, what are some of the, the real world applications for this idea of trust in robotics? As robots are making it into households and application domains in society, it's very important for the robot to have a sense of who is supposed to instruct it and who is not. You don't want uh, your household robot that's going shopping for you to be taken by somebody else simply because the person can say to the robot, get in my car and then drive off with it. So we have to have an understanding of what ownership means in this case, what allegiance means, you know, wh who the robot should follow. At the same time, if you have a context in which the robot, for example, should act because we would expect it to act, say, you know, a child is playing on the street, a car is approaching quickly, and you want to get the child out of harm's way, then you would expect the robot to jump, even maybe at the expense of it being completely destroyed, right? Because that's the kind of behavior you would expect. So what's tricky here is, is, is to define what is or is not required, what, the extent of what trust means in this context, and also the extent of what obligations, social and moral obligations are for the robot. When did the idea of networking the robots together come into the project? That actually goes back to uh, work we did in the early 2000s on robotic middleware, where we uh, had a very specific, very expensive at that time, neural network chip that could do very fast image processing. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could share that resource among multiple robots? And what we demonstrated at that time was we could have three or four robots that sent their camera images to that chip, which was on a on a single computer, that chip very quickly processed the information and then the information was sent back to the robot. And then we haven't done anything, hadn't done anything for, for, for quite a while until last fall when we started making adjustments to our control system that would allow a person to instruct the robot and that robot to pass on the information to another robot, but not in the classic sense that I give you an instruction and you tell somebody else and that person tells somebody else. If they were individuals, right, all the way through, so they had all their complete uh, control system and, and were running independently, for robot B to know what robot A knows, A would have to tell B that, and then B would represent that robot A knows something. In this case, we don't have to do that, because if one robot sees something, they both know about it automatically. We don't have to explicitly communicate anything here. It just happens automatically. When you run into somebody at a cocktail party, when you explain what you do, uh, how do you explain this project to people? Uh, so this is a multitude of projects. There's multiple different ones, but the overarching goal in our lab is to make robots natural and safe for humans, natural to interact with, so we want to use English or a natural language in order to instruct them and, and exchange knowledge and ideas and make them do tasks for us and safe. We want them to blend into human societies and act in a way that's consistent with our social and moral normative expectations.